Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. It's Azure Friday. I'm here with David Ebo. We're talking about Azure websites and Kudu. Uh, so we've seen lots of the different deployment stuff that we can do in Kudu. We've deployed from Git and GitHub and Dropbox and all over. Uh, we've seen some diagnostic logging. Is there is there some place though I can get more uh, understanding about what's really happening? Processes are running. Things are happening in the background, and I don't know about the magic. Right. So this Kudu service that uh, manages the Git deployment and such also has some fairly uh, interesting functionality that you can get at if you go to the root of that Kudu service. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. If you uh, start with the uh, Git URL. So this is our, this is from GitHub. Yes. One. Uh, this is just a site we've been working on lately, and I can go here to deployments. This came from GitHub. Yes, but if you go to the configure tab. All right. You'll find um, scroll, scroll, the, scroll. The URL. Deployments. Like, okay. Yes. So, so you, this is the Git repository that Azure's deploying from. Yes. So yes. So you bring it from GitHub into here into its own repository. That's right. But that's just because we have this URL having the whole Git part. But if you go to the root of that same server, okay. you're no longer talking about anything related to Git. Instead, all right. So you're, let me take that and remove some things here. Yes. Yes. Do I get rid of the whole end part? Yes. So just that. So it's really the site plus source control Exactly. Management. It's the same URL as the, the default uh, hostname you get for the site, except there's an SCM token in there, and you would typically access it through HTTPS. OK. So then I will just go and hit that. And it's asking for a password. Yes. And now you type exactly the same thing as you would when you git push. Ah, uh, okay. So this is the same thing I used to get my logs, and the same thing I used to deploy with Git. Ooh, here we go. Right. So we have this uh, beautifully like a, designed page. I feel like I'm somewhere I'm not <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> yes. So um, let's see. It gives you a, a bunch of information, but first uh, let's start with runtime environment, okay. which is just a, a simple utility that tells you uh, all the list of environment variables and app settings that are running, mm -hmm. connection string. Well, some of these you know. I recognize, like that's an ASP.NET setting. Yes. yes. Here's some information about how ASP.NET is compiling, and then this looks like something you care about. So we're kind yes, of all this, the settings that right. apply to my app. That's right. Okay. I mean, technically, you don't see the app setting for your app itself. These are the app settings of the Kudu service, so it's slightly mm. different. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, but you know, all the environment variables are. So that's not my connection string. Correct. I see. Uh, but you do tell me that I'm on 64-bit. Yes. I'm seeing some Cs and C colon this and D colon that, so there's a path. That's right. That's so, useful to know for my deployment scripts. Uh, well, technically, you don't have to know this path because you get environment variables in your deployment script that abstract this out. Ah. Uh, but it never hurts when you want to poke into it a little bit more, you will see those paths. Okay. I see the node versions, HTTP headers. Lots of information. You just yes. dump everything you know about the yes. current environment. Yes. It's just, you know, for debugging, sometimes you want to see, oh, I want to see all the environment variables, and yeah, it just saves a step. That's instead. nice. Well, developers want to know more than less, and I can go and do a diagnostic yeah, so dump. Yes, a diagnostic dump, what this is about is that it, it you can try it. It will sure. return a zip file that contains a bunch of logs that are related to what Kudu is doing. Oh, and some wow. of them are the same logs that we've been looking at. Okay. Uh, and, you know, typically if you have a problem with, with the, your, your Git functionality or something in Kudu, uh, the Kudu developers will tell you, oh, send me the, the dump, and then we can look at that and get a lot of information. Well, I'm seeing information about my deployments as well. So yes. if I were doing something That's tricky right. with my deployment in a custom way, I can see the artifacts and see yes. what's going on. Yes. That's cool. Diagnostic log stream. And we skip the console. You want to go into the console? Uh, well, yes. This is experimental. That's exciting. <laughs> Ooh. So what this is, uh, is basically a, a console window inside the browser mm -hmm. that lets you uh, look at your files that are in Azure. And it's oh. actually not only a console, but it's also some form of file explorer. Yeah, well, I see the log files folder. That's the same one I saw before. Exactly. But I also see site. Yes. So site, like if you go to www.root, you will see the running root of your site. Oh, so, wow. Uh, and in fact, if you, uh, like, for instance, want to see what's in your web config, mm -hmm. you can next to it, there's a little icon with the, uh, uh, yeah, right here. Not the one next to it, the middle mm -hmm. one, yes. Oh, and wow. And you can actually see the content. And so you if there's any even questions make a small about tweak in there and save it. Oh, I probably shouldn't do that. Probably shouldn't do that. But so if there's any confusion about, like, what exactly is live yes. this moment? I That's right, because there's always a question, you know, if you do a git push and you run your site, 
and it doesn't do what it should. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of possible explanation for that. Sometimes the, the deployment was wrong and may have deployed the wrong file. Sometimes it deployed the right files, but your files happen to not work. So right. this really lets you see what is it that I have in my web folder. I think a lot of people feel like the cloud is uh, giving up control. And I feel like when I see things like this, like log files or, or this kind of strange DOS prompt that I want to learn about, like, oh, it is really a file system and, it, and I, I feel like I've been put back into control. I'm just going to be silly and type DIR and, and, and look, it actually works. So I can click around in the Explorer here or even just... And look what happened when you CD to side here, the, ah, the UI changed accordingly. The UI changed. So if I go here and WW, I actually hit tab and that works. So I'm navigating around. It's kind of like that PowerShell Explorer that you're used Essentially. to. Essentially. That's great. Now, can I run commands down here? Oh, yes. So if I were doing some debugging on a staging site, I could go and look at my packages folder, yes. run unit tests. That's right. You could also do git operations. So if you like cd dot dot, and then you go to repository from here, and do git log. And wow. There you go. That's the repo. That's very cool. And this is all running inside of that, that Azure uh, sandbox. So exactly. my site is still safe. Yes. That's uh, great. Another thing that's interesting is that if you want to uh, look at more of your files at once, mm -hmm. so go to a folder in here. Okay. And, um, and you can click on the little download icon. Okay. And if you do that, you'll get down a, a zip file which contains everything in that folder. Oh, wow. So anytime I have a question or confusion or I feel like maybe something's not working like it's supposed to, I can yes. challenge my assumptions. That's right. Is yes. that file the version I thought it was? Uh, another cool thing that you can do is you can actually drag and drop a file from the window shell into here. So if you go back to, say, really? dub root, Ooh. and OK, so stay here and then go to the shell and create some well, I'll hello just text I'll file. I'll take that text file uh, of a log from before. Here's my log. Here's a log file. Yes. Just pick that up. I can drag it in here. Yeah. And there, there it is. is. So I've uploaded that now into the live yes, site. That's right. And that could be maybe a config file or some file that I needed to do some diagnostics. Yes. Yes. You can also drag and drop an entire folder. Really? Yeah. Now, the next time that my site deploys, then that would disappear because it's not part of the deployment? Um, technically, it would not because the, the Git deployment has a concept of what it treats as a data file, because ah. you, your site is entitled to create new artifacts at runtime, and we don't delete those. The only files we would delete is basically files that we would have previously deployed. Like if they're in your Git repo, mm -hmm. then you remove them from Git, and then you deploy again, we will remove them. If the file was never known to us, we leave it alone. That's cool. I'll just go and click delete, and that's gone. OK, so if I back up a little bit, Yes. I see that there's a REST API. Yes. So this, I mean, Kudu has a fairly rich REST API. This is sort of a sample that, uh, unfortunately, this won't work very well uh, in IE unless you have a, a JSON viewer. OK, I don't, uh, you but may I'll bring use. it up in another browser. Yes. Put in my same password, because IE likes to download right. uh, files like that. So if I come over here and say, I don't know, processes, Yes, so you do have a plugin, I see. Okay, yes. so good, I, have a, I have a little plugin here to make this JSON yes. file prettier. So go, go back up one level, you know, first. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you were, you were good. You were good. Okay, so processes. Yes. So here you see the list of processes that are running uh, in your site. So and in this in case, this it's case. just, you know, IIS, basically. And I can learn about IIS. And yes, and here you can see, like, stuff. for instance, if you feel like your site is taking, like, too much memory, you can really get the site counters and see. Uh, where it stands. And what's interesting about this isn't that I can do it in the browser, but that I could actually write code to do this on a regular basis yes. and explore this That's API. right. I mean, this is an API. Here, you're literally hitting a REST endpoint. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, but could I run something and have it show up in here? Oh, yes. If you go back to the, uh, the console where we were at. So let's can... go back into that console, uh, di launch diagnostic console. And I'll come down here, and I don't know, what can I run? It's Windows, How about Notepad? Right? <laughs> is it OK to run Notepad? It's evil, but it's uh, you can. So it's I hit enter. It's out yes, there. It's, it's running probably somewhere. actually is, is stuck. But if you uh, <laughs> go back to the process list, in uh, theory, we should see. Oh wow! That's right. So we see both the the CMD process that launched Notepad, mm -hmm. and then Notepad itself. And then Notepad itself. Yes, and in fact, using the API, you could kill a process. Oh wow! Uh, you can't really do it from the browser because it's a delete verb, which is a little trickier to do. But you could right. do it using curl or any tool, any REST tool. Very cool. So I have a lot more control than I realized that I did. And I can even see when you are updating Kudu to different builds. 
and I can give that information yes. to support if I need to. That's right. Very cool. So that is the Kudu Diagnostic Console. It's Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.